Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. That's awesome, good work. <laughs> if a little, you can imagine a little kid, maybe one of your, your children come up to you like three years old, and they just go, cookie, 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 cookie. I dare say you probably would shove a cookie down his throat just to, you know, kind of be quiet. You'd probably just give him that cookie. I think if our Lord was like a little three-year-old today, in this gospel, he'd be going up to us and he'd just say, remain, 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 remain. He says it ten times that word is in the gospel today, in nine verses. And it's interesting because the, the one who's doing the remaining is us. He says, you remain in me. Twice he says, I remain in you, but both those times is as a measuring rod. Remain in me as I remain in you. So the onus is on us. Remain in him. So the question for today, how do we remain in him? You know, Jesus goes through this great, this beautiful story about the vine and the branches. He prunes them to bear great fruit. That you might give the Father glory. But he never says how to remain in him. So that's our question. How do we do it? And in actual reality, in, in St. John's Gospel, Jesus does tell us in two places how we, are, how we can remain with him. The second time is actually in the verse that follows this one, the very next verse. Um, and it says, whoever keeps my commandments remains in me. So that's number one, whoever keeps my commandments. And the other time that Jesus talks about remaining in him is in John chapter 6. I actually read it twice yesterday at the first communion masses. But Jesus is given that great bread of life discourse. And he says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me. And those are the only two places in the gospel where Jesus tells us how we remain in him. Keeping his commandments and eating his flesh and drinking his blood. So now I want to I wanna share with you a little pride I have as a, as a now 27 year old as of Wednesday spiritual father. I'm getting old, I know, I know. I saw gray in my beard the other day, it was very disappointing. <laughs> but uh, a little pride I have in you. So I don't know if you've noticed, but probably within the last year or so, um, we've had to go through a lot of changes. You got two new priests, you got a new organist, then we had that, we have the Growing into Christ program, then we had the new Roman Missal, then we got the Capital Campaign, and we're going to get a new priest at the end of next month. Um, so we've been going through a lot. So I'm sure there's been things that have been frustrating or annoying or something. Right, has anybody been frustrated by anything? Anything at all? Oh, good, good, you guys are all very content. But have I annoyed anybody? <coughs> by your one chance. Are you annoyed by having to raise your hand during a hobby? <laughs> but I'm prideful in the sense that I, I sense this deep desire amongst so many of you that, that you want to just remain in Him, despite the fact that, you know, there's, there's things that frustrate us or annoy us or cause us to sacrifice. We just have this great desire to remain with Him. I know this one because you keep the commandment, especially the one to keep holy the Sabbath. You're here in front of me right now. And I know that you have this great desire to eat his flesh and drink his blood. I see it in your eyes as you come up for Holy Communion. And you have that great, great love and great devotion. So that's, as a spiritual father, it's a great, great pride in seeing that desire amongst, amongst the people of God. That great desire just to remain in Christ. And so I wanted to share today something that, sort of a personal testimony, if you... I throw it out there as if you want to, I don't know, deepen your prayer life in a sense, or, or something that has worked for me in my own prayer life that has brought me great joy and great uh, um, flourishing, um, trying to remain in Christ. And that's what I, with what I do with the, the precious few minutes I have right after Mass. I love um, just spending time remaining with Christ after Mass. I can't do it much on Sunday because I have to shake everybody's hand, but I love daily Mass too. I love shaking my hand, don't get me wrong. But I love that after daily mass, I can just kind of pray. There's a fun, fun fact for you. Christ remains present in the Eucharist. His, his physical presence remains as long as the appearances of bread and wine remain. And so once we introduce the Eucharist to our digestive system, that means we have about 10 to 15 minutes where Christ is still physically present within us. We're walking tabernacles for 10 to 15 minutes. And so I found that, you know, one of the great ways I'm fed, you know, or I'm nourished through my, uh, through Mass is what I do with those precious few minutes afterwards. You know, I pray my whole heart out through Mass, 
But then afterwards, you know, I just hit my knees after the closing prayer, and I wanted well, just a prayer of thanksgiving, thank you for, you know, what just took place before me. But then it's just acknowledging, you know, right now, my Lord and Savior, the Son of God, is, is dwelling within me. He's changed me from the inside out. And just to sit with that for a few minutes, I find so much, one, peace, but then strength and courage to be able to get up and go out to do the corporal works of mercy, to pick up my daily cross, to, to love sacrificially. It's just, those precious few minutes sometimes are even better than like whole hours of adoration. It's just incredible. Just remaining with him for that little time, what it does. And I love the, I was at Mount St. Mary's the last four years, I love the collegians there. The collegians, they have daily mass at 10 o'clock at night, which is ridiculous. I went, I think, twice, but I sort of fell asleep through it all, I think. But the freshmen would tell me their stories about the first time they would go, because afterwards everyone would kneel down, and they'd all, and it'd be silent, and they'd all be saying their prayers at Thanksgiving. And the freshmen were like, what is going on here? Because they'd never experienced that before. And so as they saw some people leave after a few minutes, they would rush out to the mass, and they what was going on with that? And so they would learn about, you know, making a prayer of thanksgiving after mass. And, and those freshmen, they come to me and tell me afterwards, you know, now that they, they started doing it, they never leave mass without doing it. It's just such a, a fruitful and fulfilled prayer, prayer time. So I, so I just encourage, I throw that out there as, you know, it's not a mandatory thing, it's totally optional. But it's such a beautiful thing, a beautiful time of prayer with our Lord. And I, if you're worried about traffic, I hear the traffic is so much better five minutes after mass than it is. Much better. I remember as a kid, I, see I never understood, you know I know a lot of people like to leave right away or even leave before mass ends, more so here than in any parish I've ever been at. Um, but, and then to me I'm not like angry, I'm just, that's so confusing to me. Because I remember as a kid, like I would be late to soccer games coming from mass. But the idea of like leaving mass early, like that wasn't even put on the table as an off. Like it never, it would never even occur to me that that would be something I could do. So uh, it's more or less confusing than anything else. Uh, so I just thought that you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful time to spend with the Lord. It's three, four, five minutes. Um, he nourishes us so much in those precious few minutes of remaining with Him. So I encourage you, you know, keep up, keeping on, keeping those commandments. And just keep that desire flourishing within to receive his body and blood, soul and divinity in the most holy Eucharist. And if during that final prayer or that closing blessing, you hear that word, the Lord say, remain, 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 remain. Maybe you could just give him a few minutes of what you want.